Hi there, everyone. My name is Dominic, and welcome back to Little Miss Fortune. We have been having a, a fun time to play, a dreadful time for her, but that said, through all the trials and troubles we've been going through, you know what? We've just been kind of glittering our way through, which has been a lot of fun, actually. So, but you know, it's been from parental mistreatment to dead bodies to bear traps. It's not been the most lovely outing we would hope for our sweet little dear girl, all right? But that that's okay. I also think we're about to come a little more face to face with whatever demon's been maybe hunting us, which I'm I swear it must be the Mr. Voice guy who's actually behind all so, of this, but Ms. we'll Fortune, see. I have a couple of questions for you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Wonderful. Now, just be honest and think about it before answering. I will not. I will lie and be quick. Do you believe in magic? No. No. That is said. The only magic came from acid. <laughs> but the only acid I know is when I like batteries. <laughs> hmm. Second question. Do you trust me? No. <laughs> no. You're just a voice in my head. Mommy talks to herself a lot, too. She says it's her inner demons and that they just keep them away. I'm sorry to hear that. Hi. Are you my inner demon? Me? A demon? <laughs> no. Nah, you can't be a demon. Not with a silly voice. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> now, for the third question. Are you afraid of dying? Um, I feel like Little Misfortune is not going to be afraid of dying, but like, I don't know. Tell, hit chat, tell me in the comments below, do you fear your own mortality? All right, let me know down below. For real, like, like, because my fear of dying goes between being like, I really don't give a shit. I have more important things to worry about, and it doesn't help me at all except to fuel my anxiety. But then also I'm like... I am also scared of it. I'm scared that it will happen at such an undue time and I won't. My biggest thing about dying is that I am worried I won't get to do all the things I want to do. Not so much the dying itself. It's that like there's just things I won't get to do. And like my <laughs> to, to prove how straight my priorities are, I think about stuff where I'm like, fuck, at some point I'm going to when I die, there's going to be a show that I've watched that announced another season or a finale that I will die before that shows up and I won't get to finish the fucking story. And that's not relevant because I'll be gone. I'll be into the void of nothingness or whatever. But I don't care how old I am. I'll be, I could be 90 and I'd be like, fuck, there, oh my God, the, the Breaking Bad threequel series finale series is coming up in a month. I gotta make it. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay, grandpa, let's get you to the grave. So let's say yes. Yes, I am. I don't know if I will like being dead. It's like too mysterious, you know? What if I can't bring my glitter? Uh, it's true. I guess you'll find out when you die. Looks like there's going to be a storm. Oh no, I hope it doesn't rain that much. I don't like my feet getting wet. I'm a little lady, you know? <laughs> you are just a little lady. Look at that. <laughs> I think we're here. Benjamin! Stay cool, Miss Fortune. I'm cool. I'll keep an eye out here while you go inside and look for clues. I'm sure the fox has hidden the eternal happiness here. Make sure that <laughs> it's empty. And if you see the fox, run. All right. This is starting to feel a lot like The Ritual, which is a surprisingly good movie. I think it's a Netflix film, but um, about friends who go for a hike in the woods in memory of um, a friend that passed away tragically. And they end up in a very bad situation with a ritualistic monster situ situation going on. So, but it's it's a good movie because it's not just about the monster bullshit. It's about the monster and the trauma of what they're going through, representing the guilt that the main character feels over not being able to save his friend's life. You know, when he basically he had an opportunity to try to step in. It wasn't his fault. Like someone else killed his friend. He feels guilty that he didn't do more to stop what happened from happening, you know? So it's a really good film, better than I thought it was gonna be. And some really good character, like monster design. Oh, it looks like Benjamin's good at cutting oh, wood. Yeah, he must yeah. Be so muscular. <laughs> oh, he must be such a strong little fox. I thought we were going to comment about the scary little skulls above the wood, but that's okay. I don't have to go in. Is there anything? Can I peek in the window first to see what's gonna kill me? 
Why do I feel like I'm really worried about like the Benjamin's gonna be sacrificed by the demon? Because I swear, I think I think that um, Benjamin is not the bad guy. I think Benjamin is running around trying to uh, like create little protection bubbles everywhere, and we might be fucking that up. But that's okay. We are just little ladies. Ladies, fortune. That's right. Be brave. She's so cute. She's so twisted okay. and weird, okay. but she's so cute. <laughs> Maybe I can find my eternal happiness. If Benjamin has it, I ask him to share that prize with us, and everything will be fine. All right. Sounds good. Is this Benjamin's? Probably. Got some sweet style. I like it. I can see Benjamin in that hat and scarf. I can see him going downtown. All right, looking fine. I <laughs> see. Like, sometimes I hit the button by accident, but I'm never mad about it, because it's it's glitter. Uh, a video player. Fun soo. Oh. Oh. In the woods. Okay. Benjamin's on TV? <laughs> Is that the monster? Damn it. I broke Benjamin's tape. That's something you all will never experience. Like, I, I know, like, y'all kind of grew up most of like, the young generation. DVDs and Blu-ray were already becoming less popular as streaming services became more of a thing and on-demand became more popular. VHS's breaking was so goddamn annoying. I used to have it where I would have cassette tapes that would unspool and you'd have to sit there. And you, but you felt like you were doing surgery because you, you would take the pencils and you would start winding in the little, like, the little notches, you know, the little gears. And you'd be carefully trying to, you felt like you were a safe cracker because you're like feeding the spool in and then you're tensing in, you're getting the pencil in the right spot. And then you're taking your finger and you're like winding it in and you're hoping it doesn't snap again. And you would like, you could fix it over with tape, which was always fun because you would have to snip the part that was broken. And then the song never would sound right because it would be, you know, like whatever you were listening to, you know, love me, love me, did you love me? And you would have this horrible little like part in the center where it would read the tape and there would be just nothing but distortion. Uh, it was kind of fun. I do miss the kind of techie times of media being a thing that kind of took some user input to use and you would try to kind of fuck with it and fix it yourself. I kind of miss that. That was fun. I think, honest to God, that's why I got so obsessed with things like sound quality, video quality. That's why, like, I like I have like a small nothing. It's not like a home theater, but it's like I have a surround system of speakers in my house that I religiously try to dial in to get the sound just perfect, you know. And try same thing with my TV. I say I do the color settings on custom and I adjust the different color balances by hand and tweak them all one color at a time. Just because I, I think I miss the tweaking that you would get with certain other older formats where you would try to get them picture perfect, you know? It's just, it's fun. I like the interactivity of media and we've lost a lot of that. Fix it. You can, all right? Don't worry, all right? Crack that VHS open. It's doable, believe me. Ah, uh, what a cozy couch. Is that Benjamin's diary? Read that shit. <laughs> Respect Benjamin's privacy. Um, he hasn't said a word to us. So if our man ain't gonna talk, we're gonna see what he's thinking, okay? I'm just gonna have a little look inside. That's right, we just have a little peek. Benjamin Johannes Red Fox. What the hell is this? By Benjamin Johannes Red Fox. I knew his name was Benjamin. <laughs> you know what's funny too? Apparently, um, I was looking up a little bit more of the game after I recorded the first couple episodes. And apparently the, the voice actress for Little Misfortune here is part of the development team. She's like one of the devs on the game. And I gotta say, I think that's great. And like, it's not to say that like, they could have hired a voice actor who probably would have done great anyway. But there's something extra special, I think, about when someone who's on the dev team is someone who like, they're performing their own project. You know what I mean? It's personal to them. So their version of the character is going to be so interesting because it's theirs, you know? Like, they're part of what brought this to life in the first place on a developmental level. And I think that's just fun. And I, like, the voice performance is so wonderfully ridiculous. And it's so, I, like, there's a place for subtlety. And then there's a place for just going 10 out of 10, pushing it all the way. And this is one of those vocal performances. And it's great. I love it. I think it's really endearing and really charming. All right, 
Uh, I must make dangerous mission. Mission must be done. Is what I trying to make nervous, but it's okay. I have study and bigger confi confidence. I travel from Center City to Pandora when fog appears. I pack things and food. No information on how long stay. I rent cabin until work done. My task important. Boss told me many victims in town. I need courage. After oh on, she didn't comment on it. Hold on, hold on. So Benjamin is not from open fields? I bet he has an accent. <laughs> I love that in a fox. Jesus says, oh, he's so exotic. I bet he's from somewhere else. My goodness, I bet he whispered in my ear so good. After a long walk in fog, I arrived at city called Open Fields. Tiny town has good forest. Cabin, very nice. Ice TV, kitchen, I sleep sofa. I decorate cabin, fish bowls smell funny, ate mushrooms in woods. I refresh after sleep, try find parasite, did not find it. Day one, fail. Parasite you say? Many victims gone missing in parasite game, I can't help. Feel sad, I send message to boss, some victims not coming to standard city. I see parasite, it scared me. Also not eat more mushrooms. Stomach ache and much gas is no good. Don't eat mushroom again. Who are the victims? What game? Ben is afraid of the parasite. Mushrooms? Serious danger. Not feel good. Danger mushroom. I stay home, cut wood and do tea and root soup. Good taste. Oh, poor Benji. <laughs> yeah, poor dude was bloated. <laughs> I do dolls for victims and good picture. If she sees them, good. Parasite recognize Morgor code P0101222. It likes to play. I has guide for steps. Courage tomorrow. Now rest until stomach good. Feeling no stomach ache, only gas. I go help missing victims in town. Morgo no, I'm here. Morgo play old trick many times, but it make mistake. One victim can hear its voice inside her head. Victim code misfortune is nice code. Morgor can't have her say, boss. She must be rescued, but I follow steps. I saw Morgo take shape. Scary. Okay, so Morgo is the big demon thing. Got it. Hmm. Missing a voice? It's the monster. Yeah, are you? Uh, come on. Misfortune, I know you're little, but come on. We gotta, we gotta piece things together. We're using our critical thinking skills, which I know is tough when all your parents have been able to teach you is critical drinking skills. Boss send a message, watch victim house, I sleep outside house, hide in trash. I failed to find a parasite, it did not come today. Big trouble, misfortune, watch me. Strange. Why she see me? She big eyes. I ran away, felt warm in stomach. Maybe mushrooms tickle again. Big trouble, misfortune? But that's me. I bet he's in love with me. <laughs> the Delulu, I, I I understand, honey, all right? <laughs> Look. These, these, these flags are so red, but that's my favorite color. That's been my history in the past, is going, wow, this room is decorated for me with all these scarlet flags. Um, I see Morgo play old trick again. Victim don't realize all is again, all is again. Most courage and stop parasite this time. I send many victims to Center City. I got level two protector, I confident. Now I has Prime Eve Illumination Cane. Oh, so that's the little staff he had. So he's been he's been leveling up, getting XP on his side quest. He's like Gandalf, where he disappears for a while and comes back stronger and whiter than before. Oh my again? Oh, shake out Benji stick. I try Prime Eve Illumination Cane in the woods. Fun! I feel courage. Practicing to help Ness Fortune. I see she makes too much talk. I think she's fun and strong. Morgo confused by charms of misfortune. I did video picking wood and parasite game, but I'm courage now. I scared only a little. And misfortune, talk, 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 talk. He said she, yeah. <laughs> hmm, yes, I know how to talk. He loves me. <laughs> I message boss, I'm doing it today. All steps followed. Prepared breakfast tea. Funny feeling with tea. Orbs from woods are fun. I am courage and confident today. I'm ready. If Benji has a boss, he has a job. Then I can be married to him. She says, I'm only looking for a stable relationship. Man who take care of business. Good for her. Have some standards, little misfortune, for your little fox crush. 
He said, I want a working man. What about this? What are the books? Hold on. The meaning of love. Uh, when hatred wants to be loved. The fun stories of a boring man. The upside of being a spirit animal. Communication. Keys to cooperation. Learning how to... I thought it said learning how to be gay. I was like, they have a tutorial on that? Learning how to be gray. Death after life. Got it. Are there more music? No, okay. Looks like Benjamin likes to educate himself. I like that in a fox. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, let's keep the music playing. A little ambience. Mmm, that tea smells like roses and lemon. I bet it's called Benjamin's Blend. Because I can almost smell his paws blending the ingredients. Maybe I should try it out. Ah, I'm not going to drink it because he said the tea was maybe making his stomach feel funny. So I think I think it's going to fuck us up. We already have enough shit in our system for everything we've gone through. So no. Hmm. Mr. Voice said that I shouldn't trust a fox. It's less about that. We, I think the fox is trustworthy, but I think the tea is probably made of suspicious ingredients from the woods. Look at that. Benjamin looks so pretty in that hat. <laughs> He said, listen here, demon, this forest ain't big enough for the two of us. Uh, the mushroom. Hey! Benjamin! The love of my life! I broke your video player, but you stole the eternal happiness. It was promised to me if I beat the game. I really want it back. We can totally share it if you want. Are you afraid of the thunder, Benjamin? Don't worry. You can hold my hand if you want to. Oh, what are you? Is this a kiss? Is this really happening? What is that? Your diary. I'm sorry if you're upset because <laughs> I read it, but I was curious. Is it the monster in your diary you're afraid of? I think I saw him too. Oh. You can't hide the children. Whoa. Uh, yeah, no, we're following Benjamin. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't trust the voice in my head. Are you rescuing me, Benjamin? Like if I was a girl in trouble? Doesn't he work for the Grim Reaper, though? Is it like, are our two options being sacrificed to the monster separately for this ritual bullshit? Or letting the fox take us to the Grim Reaper and die, like, peacefully? Because... I don't think the fox is malicious, but I do think that is the thing, is he he still works for death, I think. So, I think the demon's separate and, and its own thing. So, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you always falling like that? Benjamin, where do you go? What the fuck happened down here? Oh, this is some sick serial killer shit. Who was shaved down here? Oh, no. Is this Benjamin? Okay... There's okay. a the painting. Hello? Okay, hold on. Anything else before I run off? Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh-huh. Such a clever little lady. Oh, I'm so clever. I know how to put stool. <laughs> Time to use my ninja skills. Yeah, jump through there and fall again. Wee-hee! <laughs> Child. Shh. Ew. <laughs> Be quiet. This is, this is a ninja mission. Betrayed by your own body, little misfortune. I understand. Are you here? <laughs> so it was Benjamin placing these. But Benjamin seems so nice. Maybe he put them for that monster. That's what I'm wondering is if he was trying to slow down or trap the monster. Because he put it by one of the, um, the altar things. That feels like maybe, maybe that's the thing. Hmm. Fish balls. This is like sushi balls. Nope. No, it is not. No, thank you. Uh, okay. Anything over here? Hmm. A picture of a key. Interesting. Okay. My ninja senses are telling me to climb up on this chair. <laughs> okay. 
Ah. Real I see. Lady, I was touches everything. <laughs> A secret button. Oh, 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 don't mind if I... Oh, uh, yeah. Shiny red button? Hell yeah. All right, then. I push the button. Yeah, self-destruct sequence initiated. Is that where the demon's locked up? Am I actually letting it go? Uh-oh. I'm just now... I'm realizing after I did that instinctively, I might have done a bad thing. No, it's fine. Looks lovely. I didn't do something horrible. All right, cool. All right, time to find Bangy. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was unfortunate. I would say I it was a little started. misfortune. When I got the eternal happiness. Oh I'm my god. Misfortune. Let's finish this. <laughs> I got a button mash. This is how it feels being depressed in the morning. It's like, all right, I got to pass the quick time event to get out of bed. Get up, misfortune. Come on, come on, you can do that, come on! You're not a piece of shit, you're just a little sad, it's gonna be okay! More than you think. That's right, one more, come on, come on! If you get up, you can have snacks and play video games! Down before. Come on, come on! Yeah! Did you let that stop you? That's right, no! That's right, we're not being stopped by that anything! We got you glitter to throw! Because... Because... Come on! Motivational moment! You are the little lady misfortune! Yeah! Fuck yeah! Confidence, I love it! Glitter! Deserved it! That one was just for us, alright? And also for this cabin, because it'll be found here for an eternity later. Um, I just say, oh! The big red button thing reminded me... I'm like, one of my favorite moment, moments that I remember gaming when I was younger was... I forget what... Ratchet and Clank game it is, but there's one where you're fighting your way through a spaceship. It's one of the sequel games. Uh, and I played that whole series, all the PS2 era of Ratchet and Clank, like religiously. I loved those games. I played them over and over. I would New Game Plus that shit. I, I just adored those games so much. Um, so there's one that I remember you get to the end of the spaceship and you beat like everything and you can just leave, but there's a big red button and it's like, okay, I, I have to do that. And you hit it and it immediately turns on a self-destruct sequence and a timer goes off and you have to leave the ship in like two minutes or you die which was so funny at the time i remember being like that is the best that is such a good gag to lure the players in to a thing that okay. they think is the reward again. anyone here bungie mr voice i guess i'm alone it's okay there's deer here it's so lovely we're like a little princess glitter the deer oh a oh, baby dear, so sweet. Mm, dream come true. I'm petting the baby dear. <laughs> Is that Benjamin's bag? Benjamin? Are you around? He must be in trouble. Uh oh. I'm very disappointed oh. in you, Miss Fortune. Ah, uh, there you are. Hey, have you seen Benjamin? I think he's in trouble. Didn't you hear what I just said? I'm very disappointed in you. Mr. Voice, please, stop playing games. You have lied to me all the time and that's very sucky. I knew I couldn't trust you. What are you talking about? I read what Benjamin wrote in his diary. All of it. You're the one taking the children, and I... I'm not the hero of this game, right? I guess the eternal happiness was all a lie. Stop this nonsense. We have to keep playing my game. You can't make me. Yes, I can. Stop that! Then play with me. You need to find your eternal happiness. I'll give you a clue. It's at home, waiting for you. I'm sick of that eternal happiness. I don't want it anymore. You can't say that. That would break the rules. You heard me. I don't want the eternal happiness anymore. I won't tolerate this behavior. I'll be waiting for you at home. Now, tell me where Benjamin is. What do you do to him? Waiting at Freaking home. Monster. 
Please don't tell me that the demon is like our actual dad. Like this is his part-time job is being a hell spawn or some shit. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, why not? Clue where to find Benjamin. We've been snooping enough as it is. I mean, might as well. At the end of the road, you will realize you already signed the deal. A deal, you say? Okay. USD for students of the University of Senderdist uh, Technology. Um, protector course, three-step guide, three-step guide to exterminate parasitic beings from the beyond. Introduction. As the ultra reality forms in hand with the concept of time, new realms outside the constituted FREE, -E, five realms of, eg of essential existence have appeared. After the ultra war, thousands of beings were, cre were discovered as byproducts of the war. They created for themselves a new realm. We refer to it as the Beyond. The Beyond is, in simple terms, a place of extreme absurdity with no logical laws of physics. We can't allow such beings inside the FREE at the moment, since the foundation of our reality is based in the energetic and ethical values of the Ultra Reality. Before the Ultra War, the Beyond is still mis a misunderstood realm. We haven't yet found the pieces to connect with it in a logical manner. The few patterns we recognize are the behaviors of some visitors, also known as parasites. They normally enter the third reality, aka Pandora, and seek fresh meat to lure into the beyond. And that's why we need the protectors. The protectors are the only ones with the capability of seeing the imbalance between realities and using the tools available inside the ultra reality. Protectors will help victims and guide them into Senna City. Uh, the guidance provided in this book must be followed with great responsibility. Never skip a step. For each victim, the protector returns to Senna City. The protector will be rewarded with new tools, with new levels, tools, and more steps to follow. Alright, step one. The protector must locate the victims and the parasite. Protector parasite's case. P-01... Okay, more go. I see. Evaluate if the victim is in need of assistance. If so, then proceed to step two. Need of assistance checklist. The victim seems to have forgotten his or her identity. The victim is already dead, but doesn't realize it. The victim believes the illusions of the beyond are real. The victim sympathizes with the parasites. Huh? Hold on. Is this about us? Have we been dead the whole time? The victim believes the- I, I hope not. Uh, checklist of Parasite Morgo. It deforms reality into absurdity. Parasite seems friendly, yet it lures the victim to play dangerous games. It shapeshifts into human-animal creature. It quickly learns about the environment. Language and culture are not an issue for this parasite. Large flocks of black birds will appear near the parasite. These birds are the eyes of Morgo, giving him an overview of his playing ground. Step 2. Use the surroundings to help the victim become aware of the parasite. The protector can, for example, write and paint simple messages in public spaces to increase awareness. It is strictly forbidden to interact directly with the victim. It could lead to irreversible trauma inside the victim's mind. If the parasite kills the victim, you'll need to proceed to step three immediately. Prepare for direct contact with... God damn it, he took the important part. Well, shit. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, look at you, you little dickens. Is that Benjamin as a baby? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> All right, well... I think we might already be fucked. I think there's not going to be... Like, I don't know how much our choices are going to matter, because it seems like... Uh, oh, yeah, hold on. Yas. Aww. <laughs> it seems like things are already kind of a mess for us. Also, I like her run animation, how exhausted she looks just from doing the slightest bit of jogging. I mean, like, same girl, same, but... This whole game so far, I have like. I guess oh, I'll hold take on. the train back home. I have like no idea what's happening, but I kind of don't care, and that's very rare in a game where like I just I like the dialogue. I like Misfortune a lot. She's actually a very fun main character, and it's just like I don't know. This game is keeping me on my toes mentally because it's just unusual, and that's really I. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm just like I just like it. I just like it. All right. Now when I look at this, I can see what Benjamin tried to warn me about. He knew all along. Such a foxy boy. 
Okay, so I'm assuming, yeah, the demon's just waiting at home. Did the demon, like, kill our parents? Something horrible like that? Hold on. Listen over here. All right. Just checking. Were you about to get pushed in front of the train, maybe? Here. Waiting, waiting for a little while. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna talk to myself. So, Miss Fortune, how have you been? Okay, I have this, like, weird day. I saw monsters, I saw dolls, I saw Benjamin. And then I went to the zoo and everything was everywhere. And then I realized Mr. Voice had lied to me a lot. And he took Benjamin. And now I'm alone. I don't like being alone. Wow, sounds like you had one hell of a day, Miss Fortune. The train is here. It was a nice chat, Miss Fortune. <laughs> Talk to you later. You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like our little other self. He's cute. Uh, I like that her inner self is just like even more of a little little princess than she already is. Yeah, and I swear the ghost children are gonna like, hopefully they're gonna be on our side, I'm assuming, to try to defend us when the demon inev inevitably goes up. Chunking Saurus? Alright. Hell yeah. Can I actually draw? I can! <laughs> Do I have different colors? Hold on, hold on. Can I draw outside the lines? I can. Hold on. Gotta do this right, though. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, no, I see. It's just like wherever I draw, the color comes in. So there's no wrong way to do it, is what you're telling me. Oh, God. <laughs> this is, I'm like, this is not the most thrilling gameplay. But I'm not like, this is really fun. <laughs> oh, I wish more games took a little break to let me color in a coloring book. This is so nice. Again, this game feels like... Well, like, it feels like you gave a dev team for a cozy game, Acid, and we're like, all right, write something fucked up, but with the vibe of something much cuter. Which is something I, I've never experienced before, I have to say. I know they have another game called Fran Bow that I've never played that I've heard is very similar in tone as far as very fucking weird. Just a bizarre game, but very unique, and I'm always a fan of that. I'd rather something be, like, flawed and imperfect, but be a really unique experience that doesn't feel like anything else really um then for a game like there are plenty of games that are like polished but kind of boring like and don't really capture my attention story-wise like that's how i felt when i played assassin's creed valhalla like it wasn't that bad like i know like there are plenty of games that are very polished um that they make of course like a lot of them release with bugs but like valhalla honestly when i was played it the mechanics were fine it actually played well it was overall well designed but i just got so fucking bored and there were so many story things and side quests that just didn't feel very well written it felt very shallow like the story and plot threads they would resolve too quickly or they would take forever like you would either be on a fetch quest for something for just such a long literal amount of time in real life to go to get through these levels or i'd be doing a side quest that would be over in like five minutes that felt like it was like a waste of time because it had no depth to it so it's just, I did, that stuff drives me crazy where it's like one of the largest gaming corporations on the planet. And yet they're like on a base level, the writing is still not that good. That's what happens a lot where it's like you can throw all the budget you want at anything. And we see this a lot with entertainment in general, uh, especially movies and TV. And there's this idea that like budget will make up for the bad dialogue, right? And it's like, nope, nope. That's why there are so many films that are small that, you know, have small budgets. But the dialogue is just so fucking, so good, so strong that it carries it. Like, Whiplash is one of those movies. Um, I mentioned in another video that I recently rewatched that. They did a re-release of it in uh, in the theater. And I went and saw it on the big screen. And it was like, man, you watch that and you just go, yeah, this movie just sings and really l is alive because of the fact that uh, the dialogue is just so fucking good. The dialogue, the characterization, and the directing choices are so fucking strong so even a scene that you know that might otherwise have been mundane is directed and performed with such fucking energy that it absolutely comes to life so all right let's see it's beautiful i love my chunking saurus what a handsome boy all right how do i how do i turn the page do i have to go all the way over here huh 
I don't feel inspired. Okay, but you did a good job on that one picture. Ah! Hello, Hiro. Buddy. I recognize you. <laughs> Such a coincidence that you're on the same train as me. You know, I had a big fight with the silly voice in my head. But I don't think it's a voice anymore. I'm sure it's the monster. I saw it in a book at Benjamin's place. Really creepy. Have you ever heard voices in your head? Consequences oh, of yeah. the beware. Uh oh, it's a monster! Leave Hero alone! Hero, run! Uh, no, we're gonna help him! We're gonna help him! Hero, buddy! Grab his ghostly shoes! No, no, no! To be fair, I think he's a ghost. I think it's a little bit late, but you know what? I wasn't gonna just leave him there. I, I didn't want his ghostly memory to be of us not trying at all, you know? That would be shitty of us. Alright. Let's see. Let's go home and see what's waiting for us, because let's be real. I hope I get to see Hiro again. I wonder what that monster did to him. Uh, I will see. Now I have to walk all the way back home alone. This is the last time I follow a voice in my head. If Benjamin was here, he would walk with me. Uh... I don't know if that's true. Benjamin has not been a fan of really hanging out with you, to be fair. Man, I'm like, yeah, even if we return home in the best of times, we probably would have something terrible waiting for us. So, anything Benjamin new here? was warning me all the time, but I couldn't see it. I wanted that eternal happiness so bad. I'm a silly little lady. That's what I am. That is what you are, a silly little lady. Because I was pointing it out the whole time, and you know, listen to me. Only listen to voice in your head. At least I had fun at Phantasmagoria. <laughs> I'm gonna tell mommy about it. Yeah, that's true. I'll kick it, kick it. Yeah, now that's gameplay right there, baby. I keep kicking it. Oh shit! No, no, no! Hold on. You coming with me? There we go. There we go. I got an achievement for that. <laughs> oh, I can only kick it back and forth. I thought I could bring it with me. That's fun. Ooh. Oh god, my worst nightmare, teenagers. <laughs> Leave me alone. Excuse me. I'm talking over here. Well, if that's how you treat little ladies, then give yourself a fuck. <laughs> Her little phrases are so funny that, like, give yourself a fuck is such a funny little... Their little expressions are so good. Again, they're little colorful things that really make her feel like her own distinct little character. It's it's great. All right, well, man, I took way less time getting back home than it did going out for the first half of our adventure. And a car just comes through and hits us for no reason. Huh? Where's the car? Is Daddy gonna go? That's a lot of fucking birds in the background. Good God. Okay. Let's get this Wait, over with, I black. guess. I like them. Very moody. Very nice. <laughs> Mommy, I'm back. Hello. Okay, let's go see what's happened to mom and dad. I'm assuming they're monsters now. Bungie? Hello? Mommy? Bungie? What happened here? Congratulations, you reached the end of my game. Leave me alone. I'm looking for Mommy and Benjamin. There's no eternal happiness for you. Aww. I don't care anymore. Of course you care. You know your mommy needs it. It's your responsibility. Yes, I guess you're right. Good, good. Ready for a new game? If I play along, Will you give me back Benjamin? I guess I will. But only if you truly commit to the game. Okay. Splendid. You will love my new game. Oh, Steven. I just 
This is Miss Fortune. She's a wonderful child from a not so wonderful family. A little sparkle for you, and a little sparkle for you. Wait a minute. Didn't I do this already? What? No, you're not doing this correctly. Then you say something about me dying today, which is totally not true, by the way. <clears throat> Wait, stop talking, please. Are we going to play another game, or is this like what? I don't understand. If you can reach the end of the game, I'll give you eternal happiness. And then you say deal, and I say yes. Stop ruining this! Uh, eternal happiness? No deal! Wonderful, fantastic, ready to... Wait, what? No deal. No, no. Uh, how about this? What if the fox was waiting for you in the hallway? If the game is about Benjamin and you leaving me alone, I'll play along. Sure, sure. I promise you know the way. Yeah, I'm like, are we already dead and Demon Boy is just in our head trying to make us our ghost self do ritual shit that he wants us to do to help him out? Something like that? Let's see, has anything changed in here since we were first starting the actual game? I have a little hunch that Mr. Voice is the monster in my closet. Well, good job flipping him off that one time then. Show him what's what. Same music or different? Huh, is this a new dance song? Hey, even the music's a little fucked up now. Okay. If Mr. Voice scares me again, I'm gonna run and hide in here. Alright. Well, alright, let's go to the hallway then. I'm, again, I think we're already in, like, the demon realm or whatever. Okay. I'm just gonna play his game one last time. Makes us play the entire game again. <laughs> well, I don't want to run and trip again. Oh, save it, save it, grab it! Come on, okay. Misfortune. Oh, not again. You uh, promised you uh, wouldn't be like last time. That was a beautiful example of cause and effect. Ma, you lied to me. I don't want to play this game anymore. Fine. Let me come up with a new game to play. New game. Knock, knock. Who's there? No, I don't want to play with you anymore. Yeah, fuck your jokes. Knock, knock. Oh. Who's there? I did not order no delivery. Mr. No, thank you. Stop it. Leave me alone. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? 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 I didn't know we could move for a second there. I thought we were still cutscene. Oh, don't like. Don't like. Go hide in our hiding spot. What happened here? My secret spot. He won't find me in there. Yeah, go. Go tuck in. Don't worry. Our stony will save us, all right? It even has a hat on. We'll throw it at him. He won't be expecting that. We need the thing from the arcade with the real bullets. Open this door. Right now, Miss Fortune, we have a new game to play. No, I told you already. I don't want to play with you anymore. Ah, oh, Stony, teach me how to be brave. Ah! I swear so the demons. We're oh, playing God. hide and seek. I love that game. No, leave me alone. All right, just so you know, my game. Is the only thing keeping you alive. Is that one more of your lies? I will live forever with Benjamin, and there's nothing you can do about it. Will you please stop talking about that fox? He's been trying to take you away from me all the time, and his ugly paintings. Ugh. Oh no, you don't talk like that about my Benjamin. You know what? I'm done with you. I want you to live. Right now. You don't have a clue about what's going on. This is not the last game you play with me, Miss Fortune. This is only the beginning. Ah! Ooh. 
<laughs> oh, shit. You silly little child. Another toy for my collection. You're mine to play with for eternity. I'm sick of you being a bully. You'll see, Benjamin will come back and save me. No, we made a deal. You crossed the path, and now you're mine. Yeah! Yeah, Benjamin, fuck him up! You're all leveled up, you got this! Stab him to death with your spear! <laughs> How did you get here? There's nothing you can do. She belongs to me. Oh, Benjamin Fireball. Oh. Damn. Okay, Benjamin. I, I didn't know it. Sorry, I, I, I underestimated you, to be quite honest, all right? I know you were you were built different. My apologies. <laughs> Is everything back to normal now? Benjamin saved me. Benji, are you around? Benjamin, come on, you can't just do that and leave. That was awesome. I guess I have to rebuild this. I'll make some improvements. But first, I want to find Benjamin. Okay, we'll go find Benjamin. Benjamin, did you go outside? <laughs> Morgo is coming. Open your eyes. He's the voice in your head driving you mad. Okay, but why was that not the first doll? That feels like that would have been way more helpful well, at the start of everything. I don't know what to call Mr. Voice. <laughs> Benjamin, where are you? I feel like we're gonna open this and we're gonna still be in hell or whatever. Oh no, no, maybe not. Maybe things are okay. Maybe things are not as bad now. Maybe, maybe Benjamin actually did something good. Where are our parents though? Where the fuck did they go? The cigarette's still fresh, so Mama and Dada are still somewhere nearby. Mommy? Okay. First, I look. Oh, I was going to look this way, but I cannot go past three. I have fear. And, uh, hey. Mommy. Uh oh. Uh oh. What I'm happened? back. Mommy, don't ignore me. Are you angry because I couldn't get the happiness for you? Uh oh. What's happening? Oh, we are dead. Oh no, did the. Oh no! The dad killed us, didn't he? Oh, is that... It must be a bad dream. Is this like a metaphor for the the horrible father coming in and murdering us? If that is, that's so fucking... Oh, oh, God. Oh, there's our glitter. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, did we... <laughs> oh. I said in the first episode, man, what if a car came out of nowhere and fucking ran us over and that was the end of the story? Oh no, was I right all along? Fuck, no. I deduced too well. Oh, fuck, no. Did daddy run us over? Uh-oh. Oh no, what have I done? You're back. I thought I lost you too. What's this? What? What's happening? We need to go? Alright. 
yeah, so was it just like we died and then we like, hold on, we still, do we still have glitter? We don't, we don't have our glitter power anymore. Oh man, things are truly looking bleak. But I'm like, was it like we died and then these two things were fighting for our soul, like little Wolfie was trying to take us to the afterlife, like in a peaceful way where we were supposed to go. Cause it's like the Grim Reaper is not inherently evil. He's just doing his job, you know, taking people where they're meant to be. But the demon is trying to keep us here to be able to use us for something like he's doing with the other dead kids. I'm I don't know. Great. Damn, I'm fucked up though. Somewhere else because I have nothing against it, but I have to talk with my mommy first. Mommy, I'm going to go somewhere else. With Bangi, okay? He's the fox that I like. I'm a little lady, you know? That's what I am. I guess I was your little misfortune for a while, but you need to find your own happiness now. I love you forever. Damn, I, I wish we didn't have to learn our life lesson by getting ran the fuck over. Jesus Christ. Misfortune indeed. Please don't tell me there's something worse here after we've already- we've, we've really been through enough at the age of- what'd she say? Like, she's like six? <laughs> oh, puppy! I'm so happy to see you again! Oh, are we gonna Wait be- Wait for me, puppy! Are we gonna get reunited with the guy who killed himself and we'll have to- Are we gonna have to confess to killing his dog in the afterlife? That's like that thing where people joke about like, imagine um, if, you, if you're a demon or a ghost and you kill someone and they immediately also turn into a ghost and they're just standing next to their body. Like, what the fuck is your problem, dude? Like, it'd be so awkward. Oh, what a weird little fucked up family we are. What the fuck is that? What? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fox, Mr. Mr. Benjamin, is there better afterlife I can go to? This one, not so good. Yeah, let's, let's, oh, hi. Ooh. What a dapper gentleman you are. Oh, 
This place is really cold. Okay, this looks nice. Can we pet the dog? Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. Can we glitter you? Yes, our glitter's back. Yes, glitter that bitch. Oh, we can only pet you, all right, come on. You're telling me that dog wouldn't love being coated in glitter? Look at those dumb eyes, all right? That dog is stupid and would be so happy. Okay. <laughs> the dog says, let me in. I am ready to be taken across the river sticks. All around the thrusters seem to disappear. Deep inside the fog, you defeat him. O o okay. What does that mean? Uh, I guess Mr. Voice game is over now. Benji? Okay, please don't tell me Benji is oh, actually like some worse demon thing. He's actually like a boss fight we're gonna have to deal with in a second. Hey. Who are you? I'm a little lady. Miss Fortune. That's who I am. Lady Miss Fortune? Yes, you could say that. Good. Step inside. We were expecting you. What is this place? Oh, that's the whole thing? Oh, I mean, I kind of figured, like, it's, it all just leads to us going to the afterlife, and I'm curious then, like, I'm like, I don't know how branching the game is. I, I imagine from playing it, it's not super branching, it probably has, it hits all the same main points, you know. Um, but man, it's, it's so funny, because this was a game where it's like, if you just were to purely lay it out on, like, a plot basis, it would be like kind of a meandering mess if, if it was trying to be really self-serious, you know what I mean? But it's not being self-serious, it's being really funny and really tongue-in-cheek and really like, I was riveted moment to moment because like, I love her little character. She's, yeah, <laughs> yikes forever is a phrase I'm gonna have in my little internal lexicon now because it's funny. Um, she's really adorable. The voice cast in general is really good because it's mostly just the voice in our head and her and they're fantastic. Um, and it's just really cool. Like, I do like that it, there is... The main story is fairly straightforward by the end. But then there is cool environmental stuff where it's like, we're not in a true, um, normal, real world. It is still a very, uh, a very dark fantasy kind of version of reality, especially with everyone wearing the masks and everything. And there's this very... There's this interesting, dark, kind of gothic kind of tone across the whole world we're in that makes us let like, lets us know things are fucked up on a deeper level something is very sick and very ill and twisted in this whole town and that's sort of just kind of an underpinning for our main story and i kind of like that i like when a game sets up a baseline <coughs> excuse me kind of foundation for the story and but it doesn't over explain everything you know it kind of lets it lets the background kind of speak for itself while we go through the main plot. So, but yeah, I'm very curious to know like what other possible endings there are. I think this might be relatively good of an ending. Like we got to the afterlife relatively peacefully and with our little fox buddy who actually did save us. And I'm curious if we, if we avoid the fox more, if we get taken to hell. Cause I would, I would imagine that would be the alternate kind of split of where else it could go story-wise is that it could veer off into that direction but anyway let me know what you guys thought i know this was a weird one but i wanted to break things up a bit you know i like picking games that change sort of the rhythm of what i usually post you know i kind of do that with my audios as well sometimes i'll find a script or have an idea for a script that's just kind of weird um, that's why a lot of times I know some people probably are like, why, why is he posting so many first episodes of audio series? And the reason why is a lot of times because 
I have an idea for something, just the nugget of where it starts uh, as a story, and I want to try it out and see what people think, and that way then I can kind of know if it's something that I should kind of invest in more. And after I post it, then I can kind of see what people think of it. It also kind of gives me a chance to go, okay, after I kind of get the ball rolling, does this story I've started keep me interested to want to continue it? And then I can kind of go from there. So, uh, but anyway, this was a lot of fun. I really liked it. It's definitely one of the weirdest games I've ever played for the channel. But because of that, it was one of the most fun, quite honestly. Like, I had a really good time going through this. I definitely want to play their other game, Fran Bo, because, again, I'm assuming if it's the same base kind of writing quality and bizarre story weirdness, then, then it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm also going to be curious, too. I might. This is what I might go through and replay on my own time just to play around with the other alternate options. This is also a fun game, too, because this is a game I would love to, like, recommend to someone else and watch them play and see their choices. Because, again, as they state from the start when the voice is telling us what to expect, there really are no right or wrong choices. You know, you can really and you can feel that like it doesn't feel like the game was goading me into trying to fuck things up. You know, it feels like bad things are going to be happening all along the way because this is that kind of story. It's a story where everything is kind of the world is fucked up. Every corner of it has something wrong and sick happening. So just just go with your instincts. It'll be fine and get the ending you get, which is good. Some games that give you any amount of choice make the mistake of making it so you feel punished where it's like if you don't make technically, yes, choose whatever you want. When you make a certain choice, you can tell the developers don't like then the game makes you suffer for it. Best example of that in terms of a game that's fucking awful because it really it's trying to be choose whatever you want, but it clearly doesn't mean it is um, a little hope, which is a super massive game. Once you made until dawn and a bunch of those other choose your own adventure esque horror games. A Little Hope, I think, is fucking awful. Most of their games, I would say, are worth playing because even when they're bad, they're fun to play and they're kind of good, kind of schlocky B-movie horror, kind of enjoyable. A Little Hope is fucking terrible because not only is it really boring, it has a, it has so much bullshit that just does not go anywhere story-wise. So many characters that are annoying and that don't things that don't line up or make sense. Um, but it has this mechanic at the end that I won't spoil the ending itself for you because if you play it that's your prerogative obviously um but it has a mechanic basically where and it doesn't clarify this early enough on because early on it basically says hey every time you make a choice it kind of shapes what characteristics will get assigned to the different characters whether someone goes from being selfish to more selfless or more egotistical or more confident or more of a leader or whatever and it kind of just felt like a fun, the way they phrase it and set it up early on in the game is like, it feels like a fun add-on to the experience. Like, it feels like a thing that at the end of the game, maybe you'll get like a statistic sheet and be like, oh, you you managed to make so-and-so go from being shy and scared to being 80% confident with your choices. So I thought it was going to be something fun. No. You know what it is? And I'm sorry, this is a little bit of a spoiler for not the story of the game, but the mechanics of the game, end of the game. But I also want to tell you because I think it's really shitty game design. And I don't think you should waste your money on it if you're ever considering that game. Um, if you don't make the choices they like, and if you don't develop, quote unquote, the personalities of the characters, even if you've kept everyone alive to the very final scene, the creature thing in the story kills you because you didn't make the right choices and you didn't develop their person personalities in the way the game was technically trying to get you to do. And that's so fucking ridiculous. And it, it, made, me, it made me furious. Cause I'm like, I've very rarely played or seen a game where uh, the player is so raked over the coals for doing exactly what the game says, which is to make whatever choice you want to make. And that's a big deal. Like Baldur's Gate 3, by contrast, part of the joy of that game um, is the fact, hold on, oh, my alarm's going off. That's my recording thing to tell me to go take a break. So that's okay. That's good timing, though, because we're right at the end, actually. That was my that was my timer to say, hey, you've got other responsibilities today. But that's good. That means I'm actually right on track for how long I thought this game would be. So good for me, planning correctly. Um, but like Baldur's Gate 3 is the polar opposite of that. They go to such lengths to try to make it so... As much as they could feasibly do, because it is there's a limit, obviously, to how much choice is possible, just by brute force nature of the fact that you can only write so many 
options and variations, but they did. They wrote hundreds, if not thousands, frankly. And it's amazing how every little choice you make doesn't feel like you get punished for it later. Like 98% of the time when you're playing Baldur's Gate 3, it's amazing how the more choices you make, the more it naturally will try to veer and shape the story to compensate for what you wanted to do with the story. You know, whether you wanted to be good guy, bad guy, somewhere in between, if you wanted to be good to certain people, bad to others, like it really, really tries to make it feel like you are so in the driving seat. And that's why I think Baldur's Gate 3 landed as well as it did with the gaming community and with people in general, because it's this sandbox where it absolutely feels like they respect you and your intelligence as a player to say, just because you're making maybe an unusual character or story choice or dialogue path or whatever is not a wrong choice. It doesn't make you feel like suffering. And again, sometimes, yes, you make a choice and you piss someone off and it closes off a certain amount of quests or whatever, but it doesn't feel like the game's punishing you with that. It's just making it a natural consequence to say, okay, you, hey, you don't want to fuck with this person or maybe you want to you wanna kill them and you want to be really bad to this part of the characters or these people you met. That's valid and all that. That just means be aware if you do that, you're going to lose some opportunities over here. But a lot of times they compensate for it by saying, hey, you doing that might mean someone else down the road likes you better because you hated the same person or whatever. And it's like, it's so fucking impressive. And it does such an amazing job of, of being able to make it feel like you truly are on a path that it feels like only your own. It feels like even though you know logically thousands of other players are probably choosing similar choices to you. It doesn't feel that way because of just the sheer variety and the lack of judgment they give for what you do, whether it's like evil, good, selfish, a little bit selfless, whatever that whole spectrum of choice, good to bad is respected and has branching ideas that are designed to go with it. And I love that. So anyway, this obviously is not trying to go anywhere near that degree of depth and that's okay. This is a much smaller game. And I actually kind of liked that it was, I liked that I got to make a lot of fun little choices and interact with the world a lot. There was a lot of interactivity, but at the same time, not feel like I was screwing anything up too bad. You know, it kind of kept it just it kind of kept it just enough on track to be able to feel like I was still making progress and I couldn't, I couldn't break it off the, the track too far. And I'm actually okay with that. So, but anyway, this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys liked it. I thought something Creepy, dark, and funny for Halloween would be a nice break from just the the more horror-oriented stuff. So I hope you guys had fun with it. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching and listening. My name is Dominic, and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.